and get Pittman, a guy that not too many people know about, except that it's a pass-rushing extraordinaire player, Chris Myers. Um, Pittman can get the job done, and, and I think Dallas is maybe looking at that as a guy that comes in behind Charles Haley and learns a little bit about it. Chris? Exactly, Chris. As you get a look at the war room and the Cowboys are clapping, they were excited. They liked Pittman equally to Tony Brackens and felt that they could go down and still get Pittman and maybe pick up an additional draft pick, which they have another second-round choice here coming up with the 60, 60th selection. This was their 37th choice. In fact, he has drawn comparisons, has Kavika Pittman, a former NCAA Division I AA Player of the Year, to Charles Haley because of his relentless pursuit of the quarterback and those defensive coaches that worked him out for the Cowboys said that he's a little bit down the way but certainly a player that will help on the defensive line weakened in terms of depth because of the loss of Russell Maryland Shante Carver a former number one pick will uh, probably start on the end a lot Charles Haley will get a breather or two down the uh, rest of the season until the Cowboys make it to the postseason right now Dallas is still thinking defense as we will uh, keep an eye on their second pick in this round well, now let's go to Chris Fowler back in the studio Chris, thank you. So Dallas making the trade, dropping down seven spots and getting Kavika Pittman. Mike Lombardi, a veteran of many war rooms, joins me. Let me ask you, first of all, we see those Dallas guys pumping the fist, fists in the air. Is that, is that playing to the cameras? I mean, do you guys really do that if there aren't cameras in the war room? Oh, it's an exciting day. I know that. I mean, you don't sleep the night before, and I think that when you get something that you really wanted to have happen, I think you get excited. It's almost like a game. The adrenaline's flowing, and, and you're really excited. There's almost a formula for figuring out whether or not you get good value in a trade. Of course, you don't know what kind of a player Pittman's going to turn out to be yet, but dropping down seven slots and getting him, is there good value in that just on the surface? Well, I think what Dallas made a decision that they, they, they got a trade that they liked, that they're comfortable with, that, that had the quality that they were looking for, and they moved down and they got Kavika Pittman. They probably could have got another player on their board that they would have liked. That's why they made the trade. You never make a trade to go back just to pick one player. You've got several players in mind. Okay, 37 picks in. Your assessment as an insider, who's done the best so far? Well, I think Jacksonville obviously getting the two players at the top of the getting the two players that they needed that really helped them has certainly been good. But I think the Rams are a good team to focus in on. They have two picks in this round. They've got two good players in the first round. They're the youngest team in the National Football League. They're really building along. They've got long-term contracts. So I think this is an important round for the Rams. And the Rams are coming up. They pick 42nd. That's about five picks away. Houston has made their pick. We'll talk about that when we come back. Cincinnati now on the clock with eight minutes to go for their second round pick as we continue our live NFL draft coverage on ESPN. Smaller school, pass rushing guys going to Dallas, Houston, Cincinnati, New Orleans, Tampa Bay, and then St. Louis is on the clock. And speaking of St. Louis, of course, you didn't play for this St. Louis team, uh, not the St. Louis Rams, but played long and beautifully on the offensive line. You know him maybe from Monday Night Football, but we also know him as a friend and as a member of the Hall of Fame going in this summer, Dan Deardorff. And uh, Dan, there's a longtime St. Louis resident, Lawrence Phillips playing football in St. Louis. Will this be a problem? Will he be welcomed with open arms? How do you see that situation? Well, first of all, I don't, I don't view it as a problem. I, uh, I think the Rams are in the, the football business, and I think if you're talking about just the football fan per se, I think they're absolutely thrilled that the Rams uh, drafted Lawrence Phillips. Uh, they desperately need some offensive help. They desperately need a running back. And uh, I think that in terms of his off the field problems, I, I, I don't think that's an impediment to the average St. Louis fan. Your gauge as a, as a member of the St. Louis community, I mean, will this be a, an easier place for Lawrence Phillips to just get assimilated in and play some football and not have all the, not distractions, but all the noise about what he may or may not have done. Is this a good fit for him? Will the community welcome him without much trouble, do you think? Well, I think you raise a good point, Chris. I, I don't think that he could have found a, a warmer place to land than St. Louis. Uh, the, the honeymoon with the Rams is still in full bloom. Type real tough kid. Ask Joe Paterno how tough he was in those Rutgers Penn State games. He goes to Cincinnati, and that, that's an interesting pick. We've talked to him. Or let, let me start, Joe, with Allstott. Now, I thought it would be a good pick in the first round for Tampa Bay. Because with their style of offense, you got Rhett, and here's a fullback that can step right in. I think it is a perfect fit for the Bucs. Well, he, he really is, Chris, and it's great that he could wind up in a place where we thought he'd go anyway. He's just a real hard driver, real hard runner. You look at the power that he runs with. He's not the kind of guy that's going to be brought down. Here's a guy who pushes a Jeep Cherokee around a parking lot 100 yards just to train and has Bronco tires strapped on him and runs yep. a 40-yard dash. I mean, those are his training habits. Call him unique. But look at him run with the football, and exceptionally quick for a guy his size. Gets out front on the screen, does a nice job of setting up his people. Now look at the power to run away and run through blocks. 
He, some said, Joe, that he's reminds them coming out of college of style like Larry Tonk had. Not just a straight upright, he has some tilt to him. I think it's, and there you saw his ability to block as well. Not just a, a guy who can run with the football, but a guy who also has the ability to be able to go out and, and make blocks. You gotta remember, Mike Shule has taken over as the offensive coordinator down in Tampa. He had Harrison Carter when he was with Chicago. As a matter of fact, Mike Shula goes full cycle because he started in professional football with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But he's going to like a fullback in his offense. It's going to give him a lot of balance. It also gives him a chance to protect Trent Dilford. So you put those combinations together, this is a very good fit for Tampa Bay. Well, Mike Shula will like a fullback in offense who reminds him of Larry Zonka, just like his father exactly. enjoyed a guy named Zonka. Now, i got to point this out here. New England, in the last two years, has drafted defensive backs named Ty Law and Lawyer Malloy. Now, I don't really know where they're going up there, but they think they have their legal, their bases covered legally. Lawyer Malloy is a big hitter from Washington for Bill Parcells, Mel. He's a good football player, Chris. The only reason he was there in the second round and didn't go in the late first round was because he broke a bone in his foot uh, in the Washington State game, which was the season finale. He had surgery in January, and that didn't allow him to work out for people uh, at the Combine or in the months leading up to the draft just until the last few weeks. So that's why he was here. Good pick for New England. Kavika Pittman, the second-round pick of the Dallas Cowboys, the pass-rushing defensive end. Of course, when you watch him at the smaller college level, Division I AA, he was only 240 pounds when he started his career. Went down the senior bowl, showed some quickness off the ball. But he's still a guy that's got to pick up the intensity a little bit, learn to keep it, use his hands and arms a little bit better, uh, keep the offensive tackle away from his body. So he needs a little bit of technique work, needs to get his frame up to about 280. So he's kind of a guy that has long-range potential, not really ready to be a star immediately. So you have to invest a little bit of time with Kamika Pittman, and maybe down the road you'll get a return on your investment. But here's a a player that they I think they drafted just because of his potential more so than where he is right now. Bryant Mix, the defensive tackle from Alcorn State who went to the Houston Oilers, was projected to be possibly a mid-first round draft choice in some projections that I saw. I thought that would have been a major stretch. Here's a guy who has great physical ability, flashed that in Mobile, but Alcorn State, he wasn't there every play. Took a few downs off, played in spurts, didn't show a lot of sustained intensity. So here's an underachieving type player in Mix that Jeff Fisher's going to have to motivate, just like Jimmy Johnson's going to have to motivate Darrell Gardner. All right, then the 39th pick was Cincinnati. That's Marco Battaglia. To me, on surface, you say, Joe, boy, I mean, he's a, he's a real tough Bavaro-type tight end. They got McGee a pass-catching tight end. They got the excellent wide receivers. Does this fit in that offense there when they get Kajana Carter? I mean, he seems like a different sort of player for Cincinnati. No, I really think it does. I think it gives them a little versatility in their offense. Here's a guy who's caught 171 balls at RU, Rutgers University, which is 15 minutes from my home in South River. So <laughs> here's a kid who I think has a great opportunity to come into this league and play a long time, just like a Mark Bavaro. He's going to get bigger. He's going to get stronger. But he's really been known for his outstanding pass-catching abilities. That will be used by Bruce Coslett. Bruce Coslett has a great imagination and a way to get people to football. He's got himself a kid who can catch it. He'll find a way to get him on the football field. All right, so now let's bring you up to date on the pick that was just made by the New Orleans Saints, Durad Cherry. Now, Durad Cherry, the, the, the former pro bowler of the Chiefs, but Durad Cherry, defensive back from California. So, Mel, whereas we thought that the Saints, now they went molding so much for the owner saying we're not going defensive backs. They go molding in the first round and Cherry in the next round. They moved him around. He really played a lot of corner, a lot of safety. So he's kind of a guy that you can utilize in a lot of different ways. And I think what New Orleans is looking to do is have a safety who can match up in coverage. And that's what Gerard Cherry is going to have to do. Uh, you know, if you look at what they've been able to bring in uh, in the first round, of course, when New Orleans went for Alex Molden, they got the third corner. Now they have a safety. So across the board in the secondary, they're going to have a guy who can match up with his size and speed and handle coverage responsibilities. And we see how important that's going to be against Atlanta and San Francisco within their own division. Well, you talk about a team building. Now, here's Tampa Bay up again with their fourth pick in, in the top 41. They go defensive line with Reagan Upshaw and Marcus Jones in the first round. We just talked about Allstott at fullback and Tampa Bay. Well, they're up, and we understand there may be a trade, so let's find out what they're going to do. Maybe get more picks. Absolutely. Thanks, Chris. Not just more picks, a first-round pick next year. They're going to get San Diego's first-round pick, so they move up to the slot. What a day you're having. I mean, what was the feeling about moving down? It was a tough, tough decision. We had a player there we really liked, but to get a, a chance to have a number one pick next year, continue to build for the future, uh, it was a deal we couldn't pass up. And you still need offensive linemen, both guards and tackles. Do you feel you can get those guys later? Well, we hope so. And uh, again, that was a decision that, that we had to make based on who was there. We thought about making the pick. But uh, this is something that we had talked about last night. We anticipated that it may happen. Uh, we had